Hello tribe, welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing a channel reading and I've asked my patrons a couple of days ago what kind of reading they want to see next. So this is going to be extended on Patreon if anyone is wondering and they wanted to see a reading with no cards. So here we go. I'm going to allow any information to come in. Whoever needs to come across this video, I hope you'll find it. There should be numbers right in front of you. Choose the number that calls out your name and I will see you in timestamps. Hello, good number one. So let me tap in and let me see what I'm getting for you here. Joy, I'm seeing you in a field. dancing but it's as if you have your one eye kind of looking around thinking that someone is going to see you so there is this inner battle yes i am free i don't have to think about what other people think of me or how i look but I have this conflict in me where I keep constantly looking around my shoulder. Even if I don't want to, even if in my purest free moments. Mm -hmm. This is telling me that you tend to doubt your decisions. And it's coming from somewhere. It might be coming from your younger days. But it's like your higher self wants to, wants to say you, you don't have to keep looking around. If you are in that moment, be in that moment. Would it be you working on something? Working, for example, in the office, wondering how other people view you, wondering if your hair is right wondering if you come across as a reputable person you are thinking way too much of how other people see you of your image and that that doesn't allow you to truly enjoy life a lot of times now i'm being asked to tell you when you see someone in a bar, in a social setting, in a nightclub, think about the older days if you're not going out as much anymore. And you see someone just dancing and allowing themselves to be free. And you feel their energy, you feel how free they are, you feel that they're living in a moment, that they are in the right place at the right time. And nothing around them can disturb that inner joy, that inner peace and presence. How do you view that person? Do you think of them as someone who is silly? Someone who doesn't look right? Or do you look at them in adoration, thinking, damn, I like this energy. So if you allowed yourself to be that, other people would look at you with the same set of eyes, same perspective, damn, I appreciate this person being in the moment. And you would actually even open doors for other people to let go. Pile number one is being asked to let go more often than not, to just live their life in more authentic light without looking around your shoulder or expecting someone to judge you. People are too busy, focused on themselves to worry about other people, how they look, what they think. But if you are in constant state of, I don't know why I heard this self-devaluation, you then will be very focused on what other people are doing, but not because you wanna judge them, but because you think they are judging you. So imagine yourself standing in front of 10 people right now. As I am saying this, close your eyes. Don't watch this reading while it's doing something important. Close your eyes and imagine 10 people in front of you. And look into their eyes of a soul. Try to feel them. 
how they look at you, what energy are they giving out to you? Are they judging you? Or in their eyes, you see a reflection of you judging yourself. Now choose one person out of 10 and look in their eyes. Imagine you're looking at their eyes of a soul and scan them and tell me, does this person feel self-confident to you? Do they have their own struggles? Do they even maybe think that you are judging them the way you're looking at them? What are their thoughts once you have this connection, once, you ha once you're looking at one another? And you will find a lot of similarities. No one is walking around super confident. That's something that pile number one needs to realize more often. Everyone tends to judge themselves. Judgment is not a bad thing. It allows you to evaluate the situation. Is there danger? It's instinctual. But some of you have taken it overboard. Some of you have instilled that. I'm seeing like um, a program being installed to the core where wherever you go, you tend to lose yourself sometimes because you are channeling other people's perceptions on you and all of them seem distorted to me, at least 90%. You may think you know what they're thinking, but try asking a question. Now, call up a friend, call up a family member, And pick one thing that you think that they think about you. Something that you don't particularly like or makes you feel um, very fragile. For example, do you think I'm doing well enough in life? That could be someone's question. Do not use your own lens. Allow them to tell you what they think and see if that image of you that you thought they viewed is distorted or not that's gonna be your homework now i'm seeing you again in that field and i'm seeing you taking off pieces of clothing at first you had a scarf but it's quite warm outside you are kind of hiding yourself with layers of clothing and slowly slowly I'm seeing you dropping one piece another piece of clothing and the more you undress the more free you feel those pieces of clothing represent some sort of protection from the world. The more vulnerable you become, the more true to yourself you become. The more understood you are, the more seen you are by other people. And at the same time, you allow themselves to open up to you and to be seen the same way. Don't underestimate the power of vulnerability. In relationships, this is one of the most important things. So what are you going to decide to do today? Are you going to keep dressing up and putting layers and layers on? Those will weigh you down one day. In that hot air, in that field, it's too heavy to be dressed like that. It's too heavy for the body, it's too heavy for the soul, for your emotional and physical, mental well being. Start taking one clothes after another. Start practicing this daily. Slowly, slowly, you don't have to jump into this head on, but practice is going to 
free you from some of the restraints that you have been placing upon yourself. If you are looking for a deeper friendship or for a deeper relationships, that shell has to start coming off. And wouldn't you want a person that you're communicating with to do the same? It is very hard to understand someone if they are protecting themselves so much. It's like you can't get through to them. And at the same time, it's hard for you to open up as well. So there is this, just like an invisible wall between you two that never gets addressed. So pile number one is being asked to be free. To step into vulnerability more often. To connect to their hearts a little bit more. That pure innocence the child has, the questions they ask. Some of those questions are very deep. They might be very simple. But when you think of an answer, you have to dig really deep and be very honest. And part number one is being asked to bring that child to the surface. It's been hidden away for way too long. Ask more questions, more vulnerable questions. Be led by your heart. And I'm seeing a car now. I'm seeing you undressing and just keeping a piece of clothing that's appropriate for environment that you're in. And I'm seeing you jumping into, into a car and that car seems to be your dream car you always wanted. Your car is metaphorical to something in your life. And you're very excited to be in that car you can't wait to turn it on and go. Let me see where this takes you. <laughs> this may sound very simple, may sound very cheesy, but the way I'm seeing you driving, it's like you absorb everything that you are passing by. You open your windows, you smell the trees, you're passing by a bakery, you smell the cinnamon bun. I don't know why in particular that came through. And every smell and every sight is exciting to you because you're not hiding, you're not stiff. You're able to soak it all in. The beauty of life, the beauty and simplicity not overcomplicating things. Not beating around the bush in order to say something. Taking life in. And anyone or anything that crosses your path, you are excited about. Because you have your heart open you know that if that's going to be something that you don't want in your life, for example, even if it doesn't excite you, you're going to be vulnerable and open enough to voice yourself, express yourself clearly with compassion, and there will be no conflict in situation in you. You won't feel that you are tearing yourself apart. Some of you haven't learned how to say no just yet. And because you're coming from heart, you're coming from love, it's very easy for you to recognize what you don't want and it just passes you by. And then you're on to better things. It's like you are standing right now in front of a screen and you're being presented with pictures and those pictures are representative of what you want. <clears throat> and you're scrolling and you're choosing which picture you keep, which picture you don't. And with whatever you don't want, you're okay with it. You're not feeling 
you're not thinking what if what if i'm not able to let go what if i should get all those options you're very selective because you you know deep down what you want you're connected to your power center so whatever you throw in the trash you're okay with it not being there because what you have is what you need because you know yourself even if you'll want to take one of that image from trash later down the line you know that you won't even have to because that's going to show up in your life again and you'll be able to make a decision okay do i want it now there will be more options i hope this made sense i'm going to extend this on patreon and straight away i saw an image of a horse so we will see where this leads us i hope you have a beautiful week and until the next time i try bye hello group number two let me tap in and let's see what i am getting for you i'm seeing an, a pen that turns to needle and i'm being shown a very sharp object a very small sharp object some of you might be f feeling that you're looking for a needle in a haystack right now there is something in particular that you need in life that you think it is going to be very difficult to get your hands on or to accomplish. <laughs> but it's interesting because when I'm looking at that haystack, I'm being shown that the needle, the pin is not in it. It is actually right next to you on a table. So you're looking for something in the wrong place. You think it maybe sometimes that in order to accomplish something you have to go through mountains you have to climb mountains it has to be hard work but in truth it doesn't have to be that way all you have to do is to take a step back and look around and see maybe that needle is somewhere else so for some of you this is connected to work finances others of you with relationships and it's like I want to breathe in and breathe out. When I do some breath work for pile number two, it feels like you need to relax your mind, your body a little bit more. You have been tense for way too long. You have been focusing on this haystack, but the focus shouldn't be there. This reminds me of Nine of Wands, where someone thinks that they have to work so so hard in order to achieve something beautiful in life but in reality it's not it's not needed maybe that's the way you learned that life works growing up maybe you saw your parents working their asses off in order to provide maybe you saw your parents have a really difficult challenging relationship and i'm getting a bit of a headache now but it doesn't have to be your story, pile number two. It doesn't have to be your story. I keep getting that. Do not think that you have to climb an Everest in order to achieve what you want. There are other ways of doing this or it just doesn't have to be so difficult. Now I'm seeing a little boat. I'm seeing you going to the shore finding that little boat and you're looking at it and there is one crack in the boat let me see what is your perception on this or feelings once you're looking at it hmm you want to fix this boat you know that it's going to take you a long time you want to fix something that doesn't have to be fixed because what I'm seeing on the horizon is a little it's not a boat it's not a jet ski hmm a modern faster version 
of a boat that comes your way. I'm not being told exactly what it is. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you don't put your hands on something that's going to require so much more time and effort when there is a quicker, better solution. Because you don't see that other boat coming your way. You're so focused on that broken one that you don't even lift your head up to see that something is coming for you. That there is a solution without even needing to put days of work of research how to fix an old boat even if you're gonna fix that crack another crack may appear because it's so old now and you'll have to row and you have to invest a lot of time and energy to get to where you want to be it's gonna take so much longer than just taking a step back zooming out and seeing that new boat coming for you This is a representation of a situation in your life here, pile number twos. All you have to do is to go back home, get your suitcase, suitcase packed, and jump on that new fast boat is going to take care of you, is going to take you where you want to be. Yes, there might be stops. It may not take you directly where you want to go because I'm seeing more people on that new boat. You may have to stop for other people to let them off. But even with those tops, you're going to get where you want to be much quicker than doing everything on your own, figuring out everything on your own and trying to make something out of nothing. Sometimes it's good, but in this situation, I don't feel like it is. In this situation, you're being asked to Give yourself a bit more time with one particular endeavor. Don't push something to happen very hard if it's not happening. Yes, you can test it out. You can start fixing that boat, but um, recognize on that journey of fixing it when you need to put your tools down and say, maybe that's not the right approach. Maybe this isn't a boat for me. Maybe there is something else out there that I haven't come across just yet. So let me sleep on this for a couple of days. Let me put my feet up. Let me rest a little bit more. And during that restful period of time, I'm seeing that's when you're hearing outside of your window a buzzing sound. And you look up and you see that there is that new boat there. And you feel great because you, you rested, you packed your bags. You knew that you were going somewhere. You maybe didn't know what, when exactly or how that's going to happen. And you're very happy because you're like, damn, I rested. My house is clean. I used that time for something else. For my self-care, maybe. For doing other things. And I didn't even have to try that hard. It's like I got pushed ahead by not even doing that much. Now bear in mind, I myself, I'm always about getting shit done, but sometimes we need to recognize when we need to take a step back and to allow the situation unfold. Sometimes we are too invested, we are too close to something in order to see a bigger picture. And in pile number two, I feel like that's the case. Let me see what else. Now I'm seeing, it's like I'm feeling beyond that new boat. So you are there now. But what's interesting, you're looking at the sun, it's sunset, it's beautiful, but it feels like your body cannot relax. Your mind cannot relax. You need to learn how to relax yourself a little bit more. You know that the situation is taken care of, that captain knows where you go and every passenger. Captain knows where to take every passenger. There is a list, everything is organized. But you still being on the deck of, of that boat, you cannot relax. There is some sort of an issue that you have within you that doesn't allow you to feel happy or to take your hands off the wheel and to believe that 
you're going exactly where you need to go or that there's help available or that there's something else coming your way that's going to make things much better. So now when I said that, I'm seeing you laying down finally, laying down on that deck and just enjoying the ride. Finally, you are able to smell the air, to feel the sun on your skin. You lay down next to other people who are just having a good time. They don't know each other, but this journey made them closer to one another. They're telling their life stories to one another at first. You don't want to get involved. You're very observant. It feels like you are closed off or maybe you're shy. Or you don't trust the situation that it's so easy. It's so, it's so brilliant. It's amazing. But over time, you're easing into this and you're joining them. I'm seeing you holding a glass of wine. And this is a representation of celebration, of sharing with one another. This is also a representation that on that journey, you will meet other people who are similar, other people who are going to be vulnerable enough to share their life stories with you, and you're going to do the same. Your tribe members. Now I'm seeing that boat stopping for the first time once you're on that boat. And you're amazed to see the uh, shore, the landscape, because it's very unfamiliar to you. It's like someone else's environment you're able to see by that shore where that person lives the history the history of the place the ambience of the place and the story that they told they told you it all makes sense now you're looking at those people now as everyone has something beautiful colorful unique and at the same time you realize that you are part of this you're gonna be on your own land soon wherever that land is for you and other people will be able to make sense of the stories that you told them and how that all incorporates with the environment that they see the ambience of that place that town that city and they are waving at you now once you get off the boat they are waving at you and you're thinking, maybe I'll never meet these people again, but this was the best ride of my life. And it, because, it was because I allowed myself to let go and just to be in that moment and trust that I'm being taken to where I need to be. And I'm seeing that you are almost like, it's referring to relocation, maybe mental movement, forward movement, um, or physical movement. It's like you are creating a new life on this land. You're finding a new home and you're making it yours. And there are plenty more people for you to be met. You're enjoying the scenery, you're enjoying the social life there. It's not a big place I'm seeing, but it's very cozy. Everyone knows one another. They're very calm and respect, respectful. They're not too much in your business. That's the thing, there is privacy. Um, you just feel very safe in that place. You feel good. That's where you need to be. That's where you're supposed to be. So I hope that this representation made sense to you. I'm going to extend this reading on Patreon. And if you want to, find me there. All links are down below. Have a beautiful day or week. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, pile number three. So let's see what I'm picking up for you. I'm being shown a figure of a male. And that male's personality is very dominant. They're all about order, structure, leadership, wanting everything to go their way. They're very used to controlling the situation. Let me see what this is trying to tell me. And I'm getting a slight headache now. As if I enjoy this leadership, but at the same time, it's, it's too much for me. I do not want to be in such stiff or rigid situation. This could be a representation for some of you of your own masculine energy that you are in, being tired of responsibility, even though 
I'm hearing I enjoy doing it, but I'm tired of it. Or a person in your life who made you feel that you have to tiptoe around them and you felt like everything had to go their way. Let me tap in and let's see what this takes me. I'm being shown that this male figure is holding hands now with a, a child, particularly a boy, but I don't feel like sex matters here. And this man has taken this child by their hand and is leading them towards the forest. This man wants to show that child how to hunt. I'm hearing I'm going to teach you how to be a man. I'm going to teach you how to be a leader, how to be strong and how to be powerful, how to bring food to the table. You will need these qualities in life. You will have to protect yourself and some other people who will be in your surroundings. And once this boy sees how hunting works, this boy doesn't want to be there anymore. This boy wants to protect the animals, doesn't like what he's seeing. He understands why this is happening and why this man is showing him how to do all of this but this child feels deep down that this is not part of them that's not what they want to be so maybe you grew up growing up you recognizing yourself in a situation where an adult showed you an example of what has to happen what you have to be like what it means to be a, a man or a woman but you maybe didn't want to comply or didn't feel like that was truly you and this boy right now is feeling feeling lost and confused kind of trying to figure out if if there was something wrong with me why am I not doing this thing that all male supposed to do now I don't want you to get uh, stuck on this male situation here this is just a representation of a metaphorical representation of what might be tying into your life someone wanting to show you what you're supposed to do or what you're supposed to choose or who to be using maybe tradition and something doesn't sit right with you Deep down, this child knows that that's not who I'm going to grow up to be. Yes, I can have some of those qualities, but maybe I'm going to do it differently. Maybe my way of protection and providing is, is different. It's not the way that this individual shows me. And it feels like this child wants to run away from this doesn't want to be involved in this situation at all. I'm seeing them running back to the house, crying, and this man, this dominant man, being upset and being angry because how can you not learn how to hunt? You're gonna need this. You have to grow up, you have to be tough, you have to be disciplined, you have to be all of those things. But this child wasn't born with a soul like that i'm seeing their soul is much softer more empathic they're not supposed to be this tough individual they're going to be tough in their ways but not in the way that this man shows them to be now remember all of these stories that i'm getting when i'm not pulling cards they're very metaphorical so um, this could be translated in your life and I'm pretty sure by now if this is your reading you know what this is conveying to you or what this talks about you don't have to follow that but I'm also picking up that this boy once he grow up, grows up a little bit he understands why this man, this dad in particular because it feels like child's and dad's relationship this dad was trying to do this 
it, it was their way of showing love, their way of protecting them, their way of disciplining them. That's how they grew up. But it doesn't mean that times haven't changed. And therefore, my personality is very different from yours. It's, it's almost similar like this man taking his uh, little daughter to hunt and telling her to be a man. Um, the same kind of um, personality that this boy has. This boy is very soft, very empathic, but it doesn't mean that this boy is weak. There is strength in all of those traits that this boy has, but he doesn't belong in that forest. The times have changed. Um, they don't have to do that anymore. So for some of you, this is going to relate to a situation where maybe your parents or someone uh, maybe in your surroundings right now, maybe even a partner is telling you to do, to do this or to be this. But in reality, that's not who you are and you find yourself lost. You find yourself confused and you go, is there something wrong with me or this person doesn't see me for who I am? or things that that's the best way for me where in reality it's not. That's not my path, that's not who I am, that's not what I want to do. I can achieve those things like taking care of the people around me or bringing food to the table in, in different ways. I don't have to go that route. I don't have to step on my values and morals in order to do what I'm supposed to do. Now I'm seeing this um, this, ma this this boy turning to man and um, a young man. Um, he's in his twenties, and it's very difficult for this boy to make decisions in his life because those decisions were made for him when he was growing up. He was told what to do, what's right, what's wrong. It's almost as if he was uh, micromanaged. And now once he has to go out into the world and make his own decisions, uh, make friends, make uh, work connections, contact universities, um, jobs, whatever he needs to do, it, he finds it very difficult because he was never allowed or he didn't have a chance to be who he was or to make mistakes or to make decisions for himself. And now suddenly I'm seeing this boy as someone who is very, very shy. It's like um, I'm seeing them in a corner, uh, being afraid of the world, being afraid to take the next step. But then I'm seeing that there is a time when, um, when this massive shift arrives. And I'm hearing this young man saying enough is enough. I have to step up my game. I will not be able to change anything unless I step out of that mentality unless I allow myself to make mistakes unless I am the one who leads my life and this is a breakthrough in this man's life that's when everything starts falling into places that's when he starts making new friendships he finds new partnerships he finds himself in relationship for the first time I'm seeing and starts learning how to live his own life. Maybe some of you can relate to the situation right now, regardless of how young or how old you are. Let me tap in and let's see what is the advice here. I'm seeing a chariot in, in a traditional tarot, and I'm seeing you standing in that chariot and holding on to. Uh, ropes, they are very thick ropes that connect the horses. It's almost like it's unreal. Um, it's very exaggerated. So the advice is advice is saying, hold on to those ropes, but do not forget that you are the one who is navigating the chariot. The horses are your power, but you direct them towards direction that you want them to take you don't shy away from responsibility don't shy away from a leadership role 
step into those shoes yourself. I'm going to extend this on Patreon. And the first thing that I saw in my vision when I said Patreon was a butterfly. So we're going to see what this butterf butterfly brings us. If you want to join me, all links are down below. But I hope that this was helpful. Whoever needed to listen to this, I hope you found this reading. And until the next time, try. Bye.